This is the day the Lord hath made. Rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to look at Proverbs 10, verse 18 today. The Bible says, He that hateth or hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. We find in this proverb, chapter number 10, much has already been said about our speech. We see it in verse 11, 13. This proverb reveals two different ways in which we sin with our speech. One is we seek to deceive people by hiding bitternesses and envy with polite words. I fear that's too much of what many politicians are doing in our day. A second way is much of what we see is a spread of malicious rumors about somebody and how that affects their lives. In our society today, it's difficult really to find those without these two aspects. In the next three verses of this same chapter, we find tremendous advice is given for the choice of right words out of the right heart. <clears throat> My intention is that we will look at each of those, but let's read those a second. It says, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. The tongue of the just is as choice silver, the heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. A realization that you are in the presence of the Lord, I believe, will change your speech. Think about Isaiah for a moment. We find that after he saw the Lord high and lifted up, he made this comment, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of glory. I remember I was in high school. My dad was a janitor at the high school. And uh, I'm outside walking along with a couple of friends. And uh, there's a number of cuss words that come out of my mouth. I didn't realize it till the last moment I look up and not more than 15 feet from me is my dad. My dad never said a thing, but I'll tell you what, it tamed my tongue drastically and dramatically because I was in his presence. But we have a special note here, and that is, in Isaiah, because of his concern, it tells us that God healed his mouth. It says in 6 and 7 of that chapter, Then flew one of the seraphims into me, having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away. Of course, we do understand that uh, uh, fire is that which brings about cleansing of so much. Well, we also find the word of God that <clears throat> James, he makes much ado about the tongue. In chapter 3, we have so much to said, but listen to these three verses, 6, 7, and 8. He says, In the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. <clears throat> so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, of things in the sea, is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. You know, I believe God created our tongue to bring glory and honor unto Him. Matter of fact, it's our glory to honor Him. In Psalm chapter 30, it says this in verse 12, To the end that my glory may sing praise to Thee, and not be silent, O Lord my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. However, it's with this same tongue, we find that we can curse men. Sometimes as easily it is to honor God. In verses 9 through and 10 in James 3, it says, Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. 
Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. You know, I think there's something that we need in our lives, that we have a tongue that speaks aright. And that is to be able to forgive others, that we're not tempted to uh, speak evil about them. And in that forgiveness, in whatever conflict that there is there, and all of that evil speaking, I believe, vanishes. You know, there's two great areas in which we are to use our tongue. These are very simple, but uh, I think you'd have to agree with me. One of those is to praise God. The psalmist said in chapter 108, verse 1, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. But not only are we to praise God with our tongue, we are to edify. That means to build up others rather than tear them down. Ephesians 4.29, he says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Evidently, corrupt communication is that which does not edify. But God wants us to be a people who seek to lift others up by our words. How marvelous it is when we come into conflict with somebody that we can always depend upon lifting our spirits because they have the right words, the good words, things that encourage us and, and uh, help us to go forward. And then we need to remember as we close our thoughts here this morning, there's an accounting for every word. When Jesus spoke in Matthew 12, he says, Old generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? Now notice what he says, For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. <clears throat> I would ask today, what's the treasure in your heart? And then he goes on to say this, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. What we say is important. And not only what we say, I believe also it's how we say it. And that we might say uh, truth and we might say it in love. I would that all of us would be able to have that kind of experience day in and day out. May God help us in that.